All right, let's put this function notation formulas for linear equation stuff to work. What I'm working on here is given some information in function notation, can we find the equation for the function? And also I'm going to remind you a little bit about some graphing stuff. So again, uh, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page, I am running under the assumption that you're pretty comfortable with graphing lines and all things linear. If that's not true, please reach out to me. Um, that's going to be something that we're just going to run with along with quite a few other things this quarter. Um, so just let me know if you're not comfortable. Otherwise, hopefully what's new here is just figuring out what the notation is telling you. So looking at this problem, I'm told that P of X is a linear function and I'm given P of zero equals seven and P of three equals five. And we're supposed to graph and find the equation. I'm probably not working in that order, although you absolutely could. So whichever order you would like. Here, what we're actually being given is two points. And remember that to find the equation for a line, you either need two points or a point and a slope. So we really just need to translate this and you don't need to rewrite this for me. This is something that you should do if it helps you, but this is what I'm seeing here. If I plug zero into this function named P, it will give me back a seven, which means zero is my X value and seven is my Y value. The second point says P of three equals five. So if I input three for my X, I will output five for my Y. So just getting those in the correct order is really, I think the only little bit of trickiness once you remember that this is what you're being told. From there, this should really become an algebra problem, something you would have done in an intermediate algebra course. So we need to find the slope, which is rise over run, or to get a little like prequel to calculus going here, change in Y over change in X. You don't have to use that notation, but that triangle is a delta, and we use that to represent change. So rise over run. I'm going to say this is point number two and this is point number one. Those are totally interchangeable as long as you're consistent. That means that my Y2 will be five and my X2 will be seven. Here's the part where it becomes really important. Once you've chosen that five is your Y2, three has to be your X2. So if you flip flop that, you're gonna be in really big trouble. So three has to go first and zero is my X1. So again, noticing that three and five are part of the same point and they land one on top of each other. Zero and seven are part of the same point and they land one on top of the other. So make sure Y's are on top and make sure that the X's and Y's from each point are lined up. Okay, so five minus seven is negative two, three minus zero is three. My slope is negative two thirds. So I can start writing my point slope form, no, I'm sorry, my slope intercept form. Uh, remember to use the variables or function names you're given. So if I'm given P of X is the name of my function, then that's what I'm going to use down below. Uh, I'm thinking about Y equals MX plus B. I just decided that my M was two thirds. Don't forget to put your X in there. And then I need a Y intercept B. And I was particularly nice to us in this example. It's not always this nice, but we were actually given our Y intercept. Zero, seven, that is a Y intercept. So I don't have to do any calculations here. I can actually just plug the seven in. Okay, second thing is just to give you a couple of reminders about graphing if you need them. Uh, this says y-intercept is 7, slope is negative 2 thirds. So y-intercept of 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, means you're going to cross the y-axis at 0, 7. So remember, if you're asked for your y-intercept, it's not 7, it's 0, 7. It's a point. Uh, the slope of negative two thirds, that's a fraction. So you could think about it as negative two over three. You could think about it as two over negative three. You could think about it as negative four over six. There's lots of options, but I think those are the two that you typically think about. Wherever you decide that negative goes in your head, that's going to be decreasing. So remember this is change in Y over change in X. So if we're gonna use this first version, Y goes down by two, if X increases by three. So this says run three, go over three, 
and then rise negative two, go down two. So over one, two, three, over one, two, three, and then go down two. And that's gonna give you an additional point on your graph. So that gave me an X coordinate of three, a Y coordinate of five. And you can continue this pattern. You can go over one, two, three, over one, two, three, down two, and that's going to put you at six, three. And you can keep going as long as you want. I do want to point out that you can also use the other version that says if your run is negative three, your rise would be two. So we're going to go back three, one, two, three, up two and we could get a point at negative three, nine. And then to sketch, you just connect the dots. Technically, you only need two points for a line. Having a third one just to check yourself is never a bad idea. Also note, I decided to just use that intercept and the point, but we were given two points. So I used this P of zero equals seven. We could have also just gone P of three equals five to get straight to three, five without counting out slope, but that counting out slope is really important. So that's what my graph looked like. I also want to take a second here to show you how to graph things in Desmos in case you don't already know. I will recommend Desmos for probably any graphing you do all quarter long. Um, it is okay to use Desmos on online quizzes unless I say otherwise. So this is a great tool. All right, so this is what you should see if you head over to desmos.com, D-E-S-M-O-S.com. Uh, and there's lots of things here. For example, you can find a scientific calculator in the math tools, but mostly we should be able to do what we need to in the graphing calculator. So let's go ahead and click that. And this is the graphing calculator part. Uh, in these boxes, and you can click to make new boxes, uh, you can type in your equation and a graph should show up. You could also type an equation, um, a calculation in here. So we could say three squared minus two, and it will tell us that that equals seven. So you can use it as your scientific calculator as well. Uh, okay, so our equation was y equals negative two thirds, and then we're in that fraction bar. I'm going to go ahead and arrow out and say x. Uh, to get that fraction bar from your keyboard, you'd need a forward slash, but you can also bring up this keyboard down here, and it will have things like the division will give you a fraction. Um, you can hit functions to get all sorts of different things so feel free to explore in there but mostly we can do all of this from our keyboard and it's fairly intuitive so negative two-thirds x and then we had plus seven and there you can see it shows you something right away we're just in a standard window but you can click and drag so that you're seeing a little bit more of quadrant one you can hit settings to set your minimum X value and maximum X value. So we're seeing about negative four to 15 right now. And on the Y axis, we're seeing about negative four to 11. You can add labels to your X and Y axis. Step is how far apart those grid lines are. Um, so you can adjust if you want labels every one unit, every five units. If you make them too small, sometimes it won't listen to you. You can turn off the grid, you can turn off all sorts of things. So play around in this, it's wonderful. But that's our equation for our line. Uh, and it does look like what we saw. You can also click on the line and drag the point around and it'll show you points on the line. So zero seven is on the line. What did we say next was three, Five. So it takes a little play, but you can play around and get there. Um, it does put a point right away on key points like intercepts or if it's a parabola vertex. So you can click on those and say, oh, this one has an x-intercept at 10.50. So please use Desmos. We do want to be able to graph some things by hand, but this is a powerful way to check and to think about answers to questions that maybe aren't just about graphing. It's quite fantastic.